This month we will be announcing our new Pro SBC with the RK3588 and news about the Model B Court 64 arriving to the Pine Store. This is a video version of the community update so this won't include everything but it will give you the synopsis and thanks to JF, Alex, Brian, and Lucas for helping out and also check out my channel Pizza Loving Nerd for more open source content. There's a new Pine Talk episode talking about the Pine Phone and Pine Phone Pro developments, as well as their own open device ideas. While we do not plan on making an open Google Glass type device, an open speaker is a compelling idea. Earlier this year, Fire 219 and Gammy laid the foundations for automatically removing spam and flagging potential malware. This reduced the number of incidents, but hasn't fully eliminated the issue. Now, however, we've got two new weapons at our disposal, cross-platform deletion and a AI-trained bot with cross-platform deletion permissions. Long story short, the spam problem should be less intrusive moving forward. In terms of PineTab and PineBook Pro availability, unfortunately, we have not found a vendor who will be willing to supply high enough quality panels with a warranty. We are well aware that it has been a very long way, and many of you are eager to see the production of these devices continued, but we will have to wait a little bit longer for the next production run. Lastly, Lucas has been away these past few weeks laying the foundations for the Pine64 EU store, and the last paperwork to get the EU store off the ground has been filed, and there have even been offices set up. So, if the Polish government doesn't take too long with the applications, we can hope to receive the first shipment of hardware sometime in April. And Lucas can't commit to a firm launch date yet, but hopefully everything should be ready to go by May 1st. For more info, check out the Pine64EU Twitter account. In January, we discussed our plans with the RK3588 platform. Well, today we are introducing the Quartz Pro 64, our single board computer based on the RK3588. This SoC is an octa-core SoC with four A55 cores and also four A76 ARM cores clocked at 1.8 and 2.4 GHz respectively. The SoC's GPU is capable of driving an 8K display and multiple 4K displays and has a 6 TOPS NPU, a 8K 10-bit decoder, as well as an 8K encoder. In our single board computer lineup, the RK3588 SoC is the successor to the very successful RK3399 used in the Rock Pro 64. However, while this SoC is the successor to the RK3399, I want to make it clear that we will not be replacing it anytime soon, meaning Quartz 64 will also not be replacing Rock Pro 64 for a very long time either. However, while this SoC is the successor to the RK3399, we want to make it clear that we'll not be replacing it anytime soon, meaning Quartz Pro 64 will not be replacing the Rock Pro 64 for a very long time. Only developers will have access to purchase coupons for the Quartz Pro 64, and the software for it has not been developed yet with only BSP Linux supported in the first few months, and it will take time to mature. This will also be a very expensive single board computer with a total cost north of 300 USD dollars. It will be sold either at cost or we will subsidize it. Now with that out of the way, the Quartz Pro 64 will ship with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. We would also like to expose as much of the available I.O. as possible for developers. The board is 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters in size, features heat sink mounting holes and system key buttons on the PCB, and it is unclear when it will be made available more broadly for non-developers. It will depend on BSP and mainline development. We have very high hopes for the Quartz Pro 64 and more broadly the RK3588 platform, we would hope to see this SoC implemented in more Pine64 devices in the far off future, but for the time being, we will be announcing the Quartz Pro 64's availability in our news channels and social media in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. The PinePhone and PinePhone Pro are now shipping again following Chinese New Year, and most of the backlog has already been shipped. We are working on our delivery logistics in order to have smaller batches that ship more frequently, which would help cut down on delivery time. On the topic of software, Suspend now works on the PinePhone Pro through U-Boot thanks to a fix from PG Wipeout that fixes transfer from DMA to SRAM. This fix has found its way into Manjaro's most recent OS image, which means that you'll be able to suspend slash resume from Suspend on the PinePhone Pro just like the original PinePhone. Battery capacity reporting for the keyboard now works on both the PinePhone Pro and the original PinePhone thanks to Maggie. And this enhancement has now made its way to Manjaro, and if you're using Arch, then you can wait for kernel 5.17, or if you're impatient, then it's part of the Linux Maggie RC package. Hopefully more distros will follow suit. Taubu has had its fourth release with official PinePhone Pro support and mobile-specific UI and UX additions that should improve the mobile experience. 
There were also some boot order fixes and a new build system for it in order to build on top of the module systems used by Nix OS. GPS now works on Sailfish OS and work has started to make it work on Nemo Mobile. Speaking of Nemo Mobile, it has seen some major improvements across the board this month with support for the PinePhone's fingerprint sensor being brought up, work on an alarm application, more translations such as Polish, and a newly packaged calendar system. Port 64 Model B has now entered production and should become available in April or earlier. Unlike the Model A, Model B follows in the Rock 64 steps and offers a small footprint. It is a versatile board geared more towards end users and industry than the bigger Model A board. The software for the platform has matured to a point that distros and projects can fully develop OS images for the Quartz 64 that are fully functional, with Manjaro being the first to deliver an OS image with all core functionality enabled. The OS is built on kernel 5.17 and comes in a minimal version, an XFCE version, a Plasma version, a GNOME version, and a Mate and Sway version. The desktops that support acceleration are fully accelerated through the Panfrost GPU driver, and the desktop experience on the Quart64 is excellent as far as SBCs are concerned. According to PG Wipeout, DWC3 is ready to land in mainline and should show up in kernel 5.18, which means PCE and SATA should show up soon. While some I.O. on the Model A board such as DSi still need work, all Model B I.O. is fully functional, making it good to go out of the box. Hopefully this will lead to more adoption of the RK3566 and make more OS images available. Since last month, the AffiniTime community is still working on the features mentioned in the last community update, with some of them already being merged in the develop branch. Some of these features include airplane mode, the terminal watch face, and improvements to the heart rate sensor management. The community is still very active in creating pull requests faster than we can possibly review, test, and merge them. Affini Sim, the Affini Time Simulator, is now available in its own dedicated project, with the author, Neil Burner, joining the Affini Time team. We work together to create the project and ensure that all the modifications needed in the Affini Time code were applied to support the simulator. AffiniSim allows everyone to run the whole Affini Time UI on their computer and even the PinePhone Pro. You can also use AffiniSim to easily design and debug new apps for AffiniTime on a comfortable and powerful computer without even needing to flash it on a real PineTime. We can also use this to take screenshots of AffiniTime for documentation. If you are interested in using or contributing to AffiniSim, check out the project on GitHub. So that's all the news for this month and stay tuned for next month's news.